FreeBrokerSchool.com brought to you by Rio Genesis, bringing the unfranchised solution. The best tools, training, and technology without the headaches, restrictions, and cost of a franchise. We are your partners for real estate success. Hi, this is Mike Ryan, and welcome to another episode of Free Broker School. Everything you need to know, but no one else will ever teach you. Today, I want to talk about leverage. And you're all thinking, hey, I'm a real estate agent, or I'm a real estate broker. I know about leverage. No, you don't. I'm not talking about leveraging a piece of real estate. I'm talking about leveraging your real estate license, all right? There's, there's two different types of leverage here. The first one is the one you're familiar with, okay? And typical real estate leverage is using borrowed capital for investment and expecting the profits to be greater than the interest paid. That's the simple definition, all right? You buy a house, you put 20% down of your own money. You borrow 80% from the bank at 4%, but the property has a cap rate of seven, so you're not only making 7% on your 20%, you're also making another 3% on the bank's 80%. So eight times three is 24, add that to your seven, you're now making a 31% return on your 20% that you put down. Great, that's leverage. But that's not what we need to do with our careers. It's not what brokers need to do with their offices and not what you as agents need to do with your careers. You have to understand leverage in another form and how you should be using leverage to make yourself more money in less time with a lot less grief. That's really what it's about. I mean, the reason you open a brokerage office is all about leverage. You can go out and be an agent and earn 100% of your own efforts, or you can open an office get 100 agents and get 20% of 100 agents' efforts. It's kind of like, mathematically, it's like having 20 of you working for you, okay? And getting the money off of 20 of you instead of just one of you for the same amount of work. All right, simplistic explanation. But as a broker or an agent, you have to understand leverage as we apply it to our business. That's what's important. So the definition we wanna stick with is to use something to maximum advantage. Okay, with the brokerage, the organization needs to leverage its key resources. In other words, get more out of them. And of course, you've got synergy, which follows leverage. When you start putting all these pieces together and getting the most out of them, you're gonna find that the whole is more than the sum of the parts. That's what we wanna talk about. So I wanna give you some ideas to start applying leverage to your career and your personal business. Because trust me, you understand how to leverage a piece of real estate, and maybe you do understand how to leverage your career, but most of you don't do it. So let's get started right? In real estate, what do we leverage in our careers? Well, we leverage capital. Everybody leverage capital. That's money or credit, okay? That's investing in your business, maybe to open a brokerage. That's leverage, okay? And that's capital expenditure, um, a nice car, so you look good with the clients, spending money on ads, okay? And when you spend money on an ad, the goal is to get as much response as possible out of it. That's leverage. Now, you can go out and knock on doors. You can spend 100 bucks on an ad, Okay, which is more efficient and which has more leverage. That's up to you and how you do it. Okay, more importantly, we leverage people and relationships. And whether you're a broker or an agent, that's what you have to think about. That's, that's the easiest thing to leverage. It's the easiest way to get a lot more business with a lot less effort. And referral business is always easier anyway because someone else has already told them how great you are. So you don't have to sell yourself. That's what's nice about referrals. Okay, we also leverage technology. And that's probably the weakest area of leverage for every agent broker I know. They don't use technology correctly. They don't use the right kinds of technology or enough of it because the right technology can double, triple, quadruple your income and make your life easier in the process, okay? Then there's other resources you can leverage and those are what we're gonna talk about. So as we get into this, let's talk about people. How do you, what do you leverage in people? Um, the one thing that we all think of first is staff. A broker leverages their agents. The agents in the office leverage the support staff. If you've got like a transaction coordinator who does your paperwork for you, that's a form of leverage because it allows you to go out and sell more houses, make more money because you don't have to do the paperwork. That's leverage. And the money you make selling more houses has to be greater than the money you paid to the transaction coordinator to do your paperwork to free up your time. Again, positive leverage because there is such a thing as negative leverage where things actually cost you more than they're worth paying. Okay, so leveraging staff. Uh, that can also be a personal assistant, a good personal assistant that can free up four hours of your day. I mean, my God, at 20 hours a transaction, that's four deals a month, which it's six thousand dollars a transaction on average is twenty four grand. So even if you have to pay a transaction, uh, pay a personal assistant fifty grand a year, it's a bargain because you're still one hundred and fifty ahead. So think of those things. That's another form of leverage. With people, though, I think the one that most agents and brokers don't take much advantage of, they should, is SOI, sphere of influence. 
These are all the different people that you know that could be sources of business for you. And why don't they send you more business? Usually because you've never asked them to, or better yet, tell them to. Okay, leverage your SOI. Then we should also be leveraging our relationships. Now, SOI can mean a lot of different things, but for this purpose, I'm gonna think about it more as personal friendships, personal relationships, your friends from the country club, your friends from the bowling alley, from their church, wherever you are. Okay, most people know at least 100 people well enough to ask them for business. And if you can get those 100 people telling their friends, because they all know 100 people, well, there's your career. Done, over, it's all the business you'll ever need because all you ever handle, okay? But other relationships, business relationships, your attorney, your accountant, your dentist, your doctor, all the people you know and you do business with, and the relationships that are really great are two-way relationships that are synergistic, where both people gain. Parasitic relationships, where one person gets something at the expense of the other, usually don't last long-term and they're not very good for anybody. So you want symbiotic relationships or relationships that have synergy that give both parties more is what you're looking for. So with an attorney, you could recommend them clients, they could send you business. Same to your accountant, your insurance agent. We can go on and on and on. The one part thing that you will never leverage is other real estate agents in your market and title and salespeople and mortgage people. You really won't, okay? Um, first of all, each other agents in your market or even in your own office, stop hanging out with them. They're never gonna list their house with you. I can promise you that every time. And if they do get a listing lead, they're gonna keep it, okay? Title and escrow officers, they know every agent in town. They couldn't possibly have enough business to give to everyone, nor do they like to play favorites. So I want you to think about that. Now, when you leverage other agents, if you're an agent, the only other agents you can leverage are agents from other marketplaces that can give you referrals. Uh, a lot of agents in Florida, as an example, they have referral relationships with agents in New York because to a New Yorker, which I am, Florida is heaven's waiting room. It's where you go to retire before you die. So the incoming referral business from New York to Florida is quite profitable, so that's a form of leverage. If you're running a brokerage office, and we've got tons of videos on how brokerage operations work, that's what we are, but free broker school, um, you're leveraging your agents. In other words, you're providing resources, capital, time, money to get a benefit from them, more than you could get on your own. If you're generating 1,000 leads a month, there's no way you can handle them all. But if you have 100 agents, you're gonna get a lot more deals with those 1,000 leads than you trying to do it yourself. Again, a form of leverage. So we'll talk about staff and employees. Um, again, this can be your staff as a brokerage office. Some of it's your staff to run the office. Some can be staff to support the agents and make them more productive, or it can be a personal assistant. But employee must make you more productive because you're the one who brings in the dollars. Unless this employee has, or is part of a revenue center, like you may have a BPO department with people on salary to do BPOs, and they bring in more money in the BPO fees than they do for what you pay them in salary, leverage. But it's there to make you more productive because you are the rainmaker typically, all right? Also, you could have less of them. And meaning that if you make them more efficient and you structure correctly, you could leverage your staff greater than you probably are now. Your staff probably isn't efficient as they should be, and you can probably do more with less, make the whole operation more efficient. Um, another way to leverage staff and it's not really a direct form of leverage, but increases productivity with their support, increases leverage, is morale. Get more morale out of your staff. A, busy people tend to be happier people, and if you can get the morale up, they'll work better, they'll work harder, and you'll just have a happier time. And that goes along with improving the environment. You give people a nice work environment, they tend to work better. If you stick them in a dungeon someplace, they get miserable, depressed, they don't work as well or as hard, they make more mistakes. So leveraging staff, again, the goal is to make everybody more productive, the ultimate goal is to always reduce costs and increase leverage, which means sometimes less of them. Um, you want to make you want to make them more efficient, give them the tools to be more efficient, but in return, they need to make the whole operation or your personal business more efficient. Uh, morale, again, we've kind of covered that and environment we've talked about. So what else do we leverage? SOI, sphere of influence, let's touch in on that. What should you be leveraging? Your past clients, that's assuming they like you. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't relist their home with the agent they bought it from for the simple reason that they didn't like them. Which, by the way, isn't uncommon because look at how many closings are an absolute nightmare where the buyer and seller are both pissed off at the end of the closing. They hate everybody. Well, you mostly because you were the agent. Somehow we always get blamed. All right, but past clients, always a good source because they have a story to tell. They can tell someone firsthand how great you were, which is a third party endorsement which makes your job easier. Past buyers, uh, past sellers, any type of repeat business you can generate and referrals, that's leveraging your SOI. 
okay? It's a low or in some cases no cost way of generating additional business without a cash outlay or an expenditure of other resources. The only thing you really invest in SOI is your time, but you're not really investing your time because it's money, you're, it's time you're spending socially anyway, okay? So it's not extra time you have to invest in your SOI, it's just you're out there socially anyway, use it, all right? But again, all of you know a lot more people than you think, and if you get just a couple of them to be bird dogs for you and send business for you and to you, easy money, guys, and it doesn't really cost anything. Leveraging relationships. In here, you could talk about, oh, how do we look at this? Um, other business relationships, we've talked about that, okay? It should be symbiotic where everybody gains. Um, other agents in the community, hard to leverage, all right? And don't even try. Matter of fact, you should even hang out with other agents in your office or in your area because they're never gonna list the house with you. Um, you've got vendors, people that you use, suppliers, uh, whether it's for business cards or people who does your landscaping, all of these things. Um, membership groups. Membership groups are the best way to leverage relationships. Like I said, and I use the example of a Florida agent making friends with an agent in New York for referrals because they've always got a constant flow of buyers going down and vice versa. Other markets, it's sellers. But trade groups, definitely. Just understand you can't really do it locally, at least not within the agent community. Now, you have other membership groups like LATIP and networking groups, religious, faith-based organizations, your church. Those are great places to leverage relationships. Okay, but again, low or no cost way of generating additional business without a cash outlay or an expenditure of other resources. That's what leverage is about. If I gotta pay people like 200 bucks to send me a buyer lead, it's not worth it. Now I've got a cash expenditure. That's what we're trying to avoid. And that's the terms I want you to think about it in. That brings us to technology. The real estate industry as a whole is the slowest and worst to adapt to technology out of any other industry in the country. All right, and think about this very carefully. None of you are running a turnkey solution for your entire business, one system that does everything. Your doctor is, they track your appointments, your patient records, your scripts, your follow-up appointment, your billing, everything's in one system. Restaurants, same thing. All right, from making the reservation online to assigning your table, to turning the order into the kitchen, to ordering the supplies, all automated. We're the only industry that has not done that. I mean, it's one of the things I'm building with Rio Genesis and that's what I built, but systems and automation I would say are the number one thing that people could use to improve their business, make more money, and more importantly, have more free time because that's your biggest problem. You could be a top producer doing 100 deals a year, but if you don't have systems intact, you're never gonna have a life, okay? But systems and automation are a form of leverage. You're gonna invest some money in some technology. It will give you more time and more money back. That's the goal. So systems and automation can keep you on track and organized. They can make you and all of your people more efficient. Um, you can use CRMs and contact managers to build relationships for you and automate that process. Some of the stuff out there is so good right now. I know because I've been building some of this stuff, okay? Um, compliance and risk management. Another thing that everybody has to worry about. If you have to spend time auditing files constantly instead of having it automated, that's less time you can be selling. It's not productive. I don't know any agent who ever got rich doing paperwork. We don't get paid to do paperwork. We get paid to sell things, okay? Paperwork's just a little extra we gotta do, okay? But good technology and automation also reduces staff requirements, so it cuts your payroll and expenses, and it eliminates a lot of issues. Technology doesn't call in sick. Technology doesn't have a fight with another employee. Blah, 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 I can go on forever about the nightmares of employees and personalities. Technology doesn't have any of that. Technology works 24 seven, and it doesn't get mad, it doesn't get upset, it doesn't get sick, it doesn't quit on you. I mean, technology is a beautiful thing. You should be using more of it, okay? More importantly, your staff will make mistakes. Everybody does. Good technology doesn't make mistakes. It does exactly what you tell it to every time, okay? So when you go back to compliance or risk management, there you go. Technology doesn't forget or lose things. Employees do. Again, I think every real estate office could replace one or two employees with decent technology for one-tenth the cost and be 10 times more productive. I'm a big fan of that. We are the worst industry out there in the entire country as far as using technology and what's available to us. We're just slow to adapt, we're set in our ways. I don't know why we like paper and files, but we do, okay? But it is the cheapest and most efficient way to become more productive is leveraging technology if you're an agent or a broker right now. Now, leveraging agents. This only applies to brokers. 
but this is still the number one way to leverage your real estate brokerage business. Agents are really low or no cost. The fact is whether you have 10 agents or 100, your operational cost will be about the same. And with most agents working from home or virtually, it's not like you need to go rent more space, okay? So again, office expenses fixed, number of agents, get as many as you can and you want, okay? Yes, is there a slight management increase? Yeah, but it's nowhere near the increase in dollars they'll bring in, okay? So more agents, more transactions, more revenue. That is the ultimate low or no cost means to increase revenue long-term, all right? You could have 100% of yourself or 10% of 100 agents. And I use the 10% there because at 90% splits, you can recruit agents real easy, especially if you're a good person running a good shop. Still, take 10% of 100 agents, that's like having 10 of you. So it's 10 times your income right there. Okay, now, I know brokers say, well, the agents aren't like me, they're not, well, they probably aren't. So you get more of them and you help them and train them. Well, not even train them. Okay, you can't really drive production through training, it's driven through culture. Anyway, tons of videos on this up on Free Broker School on how to do all of this. But I want you to rethink leverage. It has nothing to do with putting down 10% and borrowing 90% from a bank. You need to leverage your life. Leverage your license, leverage your business. That's what I'm talking about here. And if you do this, even if you do half of these things, you'll have more business, more money, and more free time, and a much less stressful life. Probably the number one mistake I see, and I'll be honest with you, I've trained thousands of agents at this point, maybe even thousands more have heard me speak. I don't even know how many brokers and offices I've coached over the years. Um, it's gotta be in the hundreds, maybe over a thousand there too. But the very first conversation I have is let's look at what you have and how you're using it because we've got a leverage issue here. So very important you take this to heart. Thanks and go make money. Never miss an episode with Mike Crine. FreeBrokerSchool.com. Subscribe to our channel here on YouTube or on our website, FreeBrokerSchool.com, to get all the handouts and all the lessons. That's right, FreeBrokerSchool.com on YouTube and on our website.